So good afternoon. Many thanks for joining um, this open air um, uh, webinar on Diamond Open Access. Uh, the focus was in fact in, in presenting the, the Episcience um, uh, tool, uh, the overlay journal platform Episciences. Uh, and we uh, decided also to integrate uh, and highlight the action plan uh, that was recently um, presented uh, by Science Europe and other, and other partners. Um, about the, the diamond open uh, open access in this in this webinar, so we will have a one hour and a half um, session, a really rich session uh, on diamond open access and the action plan and the overlay journal platform Epi Sciences. So this, uh, as you already saw, this uh, webinar is being recorded and the recordings will be made available. Also, the presentation at the end, we are going also to ask you to fill um, an evaluation um, form about this, uh, this uh, webinar. Um, so uh, please ensure that your microphones are, are off. We will also make sure of, of, of that. So just to, to simplify the process uh, in, in the, the presentations, but of course we want your participation. You can share your thoughts in the chat or sometimes it's also rich to have a kind of parallel conversations in the chat is always interesting and we we will share for sure several useful links in the in the chat um, and then uh, we, we are going also to 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 give the floor to you uh, at the end of uh, at least the, we have three moments specifically to ensure your uh, participation Uh, okay, this webinar is under the, the umbrella of open air webinars, so several webinars uh, that we are organizing. Uh, uh, also under this specific open air project, open air Nexus, that is working on the onboarding of the open air uh, services and tools in the European open, open Science Cloud, and also developing and improving uh, the portfolio of open air services. You see here uh, this uh, this diagram with different uh, open air services targeting different uh, uh, users, different stakeholders, addressing different needs of the research community from from publish, monitor to discover, uh, targeting repository managers, targeting researchers, research support staff, and uh, under this um, portfolio of services under publish we have Episcience. The, this 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 platform and this webinar is dedicated to episcience so the agenda uh, uh, we will have four speakers the first three speakers are specifically on episciences uh, rafael tournois is the the product manager we are going also to have a presentation from celine bartuna uh, both from cnrs uh, and then uh, Matthias will um, um, present a use case uh, from this uh, service later. We have Berg, but uh, let's first start with this first part of the of the session um, dedicated to um, Episciences, where we'll have uh, after the presentation of Raphael and Celine, uh, you you can ask questions, and then we have. Uh, a specific use case, feedback and experience from the uh, JetCam overlay journal uh, to from Matthias, and then you will, will have also the possibility to ask questions. So let's first start first start with this block of presentations related with the sciences. Rafael, um, the floor is is yours. You can uh, you can um, also present yourself better. Uh, to the audience, uh, and then proceed with your um, presentation. So, really, thank uh, thanks for your availability to to manage this uh, this webinar. And um, so, feel free to to start to present yourself and to start sharing your screen. Okay, can you hear me? Let's move. Let's move from Portugal to France now. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me? It's okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I will share my screen. Uh, and do you see my screen? Everything is perfect. The sound okay. and the image. Right. So thank you. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining. And 
would like to thank OpenAir for organizing and inviting us to speak about uh, key sciences and other things. So uh, let's start. So Céline Bertona and I, uh, I'm Rafael Tudor, Céline Bertona and I work at uh, CCSD. Uh, CCSD is a joint unit of Célawa, Sinoya, and INRAE. Um, uh, it's, my mission is to provide tools and services in respect to um, open access for higher education and uh, research. We are uh, operating three platforms. Uh, the first one is AL. It's an open repository. It's the first platform uh, created by the CCSD. Uh, there is also EpiSciences, which we are talking about today. And the third platform is uh, ScienceConf. It's a platform for organizing uh, conference, um, conferences and um, scientific events. Um, so let, let me just interrupt for a small uh, minor, just minimize your uh, window the, with the, the image, you, with your image. Because oh, this one? It's, yes, it's, it's strange. Okay, perfect, perfect. You can, yes. you can proceed, yes. It's okay, thank you. So what is EpiSciences? Uh, it's a platform to publish open access scientific journals. Uh, we are open to any disciplines. For the moment, most of the journals are from mathematics, uh, computer science, and informatics. Uh, mathematics, sorry, and also social sciences and um, humanities. We are open to new journals or flipping journals. For instance, we have some journals that are coming from commercial publishers. Uh, this is a platform where scientific com communities can create and operate high quality open access journals. And we only provide diamond open access journals. It means that uh, it is free to both authors and readers. Actually, it's a mix of cold open access because the journals are in open access and green open access because we, we do require that um, self-archiving happens in a, an open access repository. And uh, the special thing about this platform for publishing the open access journals, it, it, it's, it's an overlay journal model because um, we're operating on top of open access repositories at the moment, we have uh, we do provide AL, Archive, and Dinodo, but we will uh, provide other preprint servers in the future. We do uh, offer the, a solution to peer review preprints because we can uh, um, provide single blind review, um, single blind uh, peer review, and also open peer review. It depends on the choices of the journals. And what is specific is that all versions are always available online because in the whole publication process, a version has to be submitted in an open repository. Well, it means that, for instance, if the journal disappears or moves every, any, um, in another place, you can still access the content in the open repository. Actually, the platform could be moved to another hosting server, for instance, or organization and the journal could still uh, work as such because the content is always um, submitted online in, uh, in open access. So updates are still possible on journal and on the archive. Anyone, any authors can submit a new version even after the publication of the, um, the last version. Um, the idea of um, an overlay journal was proposed to the CCSD in 2003 by Professor Jean-Pierre de Mailly, a French mathematician. So the, the thing about AP sciences is that AP means above, on top of, that's what that the extract on the right uh, from Wiki, Wikipedia. So what is the workflow of a platform? The first thing is that it has to start with a preprint that should be submitted uh, onto an open archive compatible with AP Sciences. So at the moment it's all archive and Zenodo. When the preprint has been submitted, you get usually um, a PID, so either a DOI or a handle, for instance, or um, archive also provides DOI now. Then this DOI can be submitted to the journal. You just have to copy and paste the identifier and we will get the metadata from the open archive. Then the design board with, uh, will uh, select reviewers, for instance, um, and they can um, have multiple rounds of peer review and ask the authors to submit 
other versions on the preprint server. If the article is refused, uh, it is not notified to the preprint server. But if the article is accepted, you can have a step five of copy editing. And if uh, the, copy, the article is accepted, it is copy edited. And then at the end of the process, the article is published. So the, the latest published version is uh, also submitted on uh, the open repository. So from the end to the from the beginning to the end, sorry, you have every versions available in the open repository. And the latest version has the um, publication references. So it means that you know that it has been published in the journal and you have, for instance, the DOI assigned by Episciences and also um, volumes, etc. So what is the organization of Episciences? The platform is organized with a steering committee that is responsible for reviewing the general platform orientations. We also have three EP committees that are responsible mainly for selecting um, journals in their disciplines. So they are evaluating the journal applications that are proposed to the platform. And uh, uh, we can also help um, on the scientific level of uh, the journal organization. We also have the editorial committees that are responsible for organizing the evaluation and scientific dis discussion of the journals. So we do organize the peer review process, select the reviewers, invite them, and uh, uh, usually also do the copy editing. And at the end, if everything is accepted and well done, you can have the publication process that is done by also the editor in chief. Uh, so what is interesting about AP Sciences is that it's a nice way to reduce your cost because the platform does not require subscription, of course, no IPCs, and we do provide free hosting and support. We're able to publish at a reasonable, reasonable cost because we do share an infrastructure with, uh, for instance, HAL and other platforms of the CCSD. Also, the hosting and preservation uh, are done by repositories. So this is part of our usual mission to, to preserve the content in open access. And as we are requiring open access submissions, uh, this is done by the preprint servers. So it's also a nice way to reinvest, to reinvest public money in the form of human resources in, in the public service, because the work of the scientists um, is not done really for free, but it could be reinvested in the public common good, such as open access uh, journals. It's also a nice way to add value to open archives because we do the, the step that is missing to preprint servers, that is validation and certification of preprints. It's also a good way to reduce time to access publications because you don't have to wait, uh, for instance, 12 months to publish your paper. Uh, your preprint is, of course, immediately available on the preprint server. And every revised version will also be available and can be cited also. And also, of course, everything stays online. Even if the article is refused, your paper is still online and can be submitted to another journal that will be more suitable, for instance. So what is also interesting is that it's help, it helps increasing traceability because we can track the evolution of document versions, even after publication. This means that uh, we can consider the publication process as a commercial flow because when the article is published, that is the way of working of open server that you can actually submit subsequent version even after the publication. It is, a, of course, open by design. So we do, of course, are compliant with open access mandates because we have to start in open server and in open access, and we have to end also in open access. Uh, usually, the, the journals uh, do require Creative Commons licenses, so all the authors do retain their rights. It means that they get a non-exclusive distribution right. The journals do have a non-exclusive distribution right, sorry. Most of the time, though, the Creative Commons license chosen is uh, a CC BY. That's what we recommend. It's also a good way to ensure long-term access to content because uh, we do um, the preprint server are able to maintain control um, for the publications. 
and uh, we do host evaluations also on the platform. Um, so, like I said earlier, if you delete the journal, actually the content will still be available and online in the open repository. Open repositories are um, more stable in the long term, so this is a great way to ensure access to content. Also, we offer sometimes like R, we do offer services to preserve the long term access to document. It means that we have a partnership with uh, CNS in France that is able to guarantee that uh, PDF documents are still uh, readable in the long term. And uh, it's also a good way to ensure scientific independence because we do allow scientific communities to on the data and uh, what we what we do create. So it's kind of uh, you can say that it's academic owned a platform, and uh, we are attentive to to the needs of the researchers and try to make it uh, a, a platform uh, that really should 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 their needs. So we can have a scientific policy that is independent of any commercial logic because we are not operating on a commercial level. It's also a good way to meet fair, fair principles because we, we do rely on the preprint server and their features that already meet some of the fair principles and we do have some other services to, to help that. And it's also a nice way to increase the bibliodiversity because it's diamond open access, but with as overlay, which is not so usual in the journal landscape. So EP Sciences uh, is also part of the Open Air Nexus um, project. So we are now in the EOS marketplace, and we have we have received some received uh, some really good help from other open air services, and so we have realize the integration of uh, Zenodo, for instance, as a new repository server. We can also take uh, leverage the, the APIs from Scroll Explorer and Open Air Research Clash. So we will be able with that to enrich metadata of, offered on the EP Sciences journals and articles. We also improve uh, the citations uh, with a partnership with using the open APIs from Web citations and many other services like open air usage statistics. Um, so let me show you how to use quickly the platform. Each journal has its own domain name. So for instance, let's try with LMCS, Logical Methods in Computer Science. So this is the, on the right the web page of the, the home page of LMCS. So when you want to submit a preprint to a server, to a journal, to LMCS, for instance. So you have to submit it, for instance, to archive. So let's try with this one. This one has received um, an archive identifier. So this article is online as version one on archive in 2018. Then you can copy and paste the archive ID on our journal web form. So you just have to select the archive server paste the archive ID and select the version. So yeah, it's version one that is submitted to LMCS. Then we will take the metadata from our archive using their APIs and insert the content into the LMCS journal. So you can see we have the same authors, of course, and titles and abstracts and keywords. Then the journal, <coughs> so we will Conduce its peer review process. So they can design, for instance, a reviewing grid or as many as they want. And then they will select the peer reviewers. Uh, they will ask some revisions to the authors that will upload it again on the Open Archive repository. So, archive. If you look on the, on the left of this slide, you can see that this document has uh, many submitted versions on uh, the LMCS journal. On the right, you can see that there are also more versions available on archive. And you can see that uh, the article has been available since uh, 2018 to 2020. Actually, version 10 was published, but uh, version one was the first submitted version, uh, version two was the first submitted version to LMCS. It means that during all these years, the article has been available online, could be cited, and could be, of course, revised and reused. 
can improve. That's what happened actually on LMCS. The article has been improved thanks to the feedback of the reviewers. So this is why you have so many versions and editing. Um, at the end of the process, after the copy editing, you can see on the right, you have the version that is that has been copy edited by LMCS. This is the version that has been published. So it's version 10. And if you click on the left, uh, part of the slide, you have a download this file button. If you click on download this file, what happens is that you are actually downloading the content from archive. You do not host the PDF file. It's hosted on archive. If you click on the button on the right, you can consult the article white page on archive and see the original um, uh, preprint also, and uh, consult the other version that were available before the published version. You can see also on the bottom right of the page that this article has been assigned a DOI, which is the same, of course, on the left. This is the DOI assigned by EpiScience. When we assign the DOI, we try to link the DOI to the other preprint versions. So, in the, so all the PIDs are joined together with the, um, the DOI and the archive handles. At the end of the process, you have uh, on the right the, the published version, and on the left the version that is also available on archive, of course. This is the same document, but with two presentations different. And we will also update automatically uh, the journal references on the archive using the IPL provided by archive. That's why you have the journal reference LMCS volume 16, issue 2, published in 2020. And you can see also the DOI that has been uh, replicated from API Sciences to Archive. Um, so there are also many services that are provided by Archive, by uh, API Sciences, sorry. And um, my colleague Céline Bartona will, will now present them, please. Thank you, Raphael, and thank you, all of you, for being there. It's a real pleasure to present our work to you today. Um, my name is Céline Bartona, and I also work for EP Sciences with Raphael as a publishing officer. In the first part of the presentation, Raphael presented about EP Sciences. Sorry. She <laughs> So in the first part of the presentation, Raphael presented what EpiScience is, is and how to use it. In this part of the presentation, I'm going to give you an overview of the services of the platform and what we are doing to help users to manage their journals. In my presentation, I would like to cover four major points. First of all, I will begin to explaining the creation of a personalized site for each journal and what we are doing to create a journal which reflects your editorial line. Secondly, I will, take about, I will talk about the technical support we offer for the editorial staff, the boards, and all users of the platform, including authors, reviewers, and editors. Thirdly, I will detail what we do in order to help with the publication and distribution. Finally, I'll present the reference databases of each publication, each discipline, and what we are doing to allow your journals to be indexed in these databases. Then Raphael and I will answer questions if you have some. Allow me to start with the creation of a personalized website. For the moment, we have 22 overlay journals in the platform and the help up conference proceedings. There are eight journals in informatics and applied mathematics, seven in mathematics, five in social sciences and humanities, one in environment, and one in mechanics. It's a journal of theoretical, computational, and applied mechanics, which will be presented later by Mathias Legan. Journals which want to join the platform have to candidate. Once journals are accepted, we create and host a personal website for each journal. As Raphael showed in the first part, each journal has its own 
URL, which is journalsname.episcience.org. We configure the space according to the editorial policy of the journal. Vertical or horizontal menu, indexes by name, volumes, latest articles, year of publication, pages for the guidelines, presentation of editorial boards and committees, editorial policies, and so on. We provide the DOI by Crossref for each published document. We also create an adapted graphic charter. We choose with the editors the font and colors, and we help them to create the style sheets if they need it. We can also create a header. Here are some headers of uh, different uh, journals on the platform, for example. Now, let's have a look on our technical support. Epicience offers daily support in the use of the software, such as a bilingual documentation, both in French and English, evolving as the platform evolves. It also offers technical support by email and a bug reporting service via GitHub. Each user, um, authors, for example, reviewers or editors, can write to us in order to have some help while they are using the platform. A specific technical support is provided by INRIA and the Institute Fourier for the journals supported by these institutions. So that were the journals uh, in uh, informatics and in mathematics. We also plan to train by video on requests of the editorial teams on a specific point or on the general functioning of the platform. Let's now examine what we can do to help with the publication and distribution. We provide some help with the publication and distribution of the journal. For example, we can ask an ISSN for your journal if you don't have one. We can advise you in the choice of Creative Commons licenses. We can provide assistance in drawing up a copyright assignment contract. We can give editorial advice and information on open access publishing requirements. We can help the editorial boards to apply for institutional support. And we also link editorial staff with service providers for copy editing. At last, but not least, we take care of the procedures for indexing overlaid journals in the reference databases of each discipline and in interdisciplinary databases. In particular, the Digital Bibliography and Library Project in Informatics, the Directory of Open Access Journals for all journals, the European Reference Index for the Humanities, EZB, Free Journal Network, Google Scholar, Isidore, which is a French database for humanities and social sciences, MadSciNet, Mirabel, which is a French database for academic journals in all disciplines, WorldCat, ZBMAT, and, of course, OpenAir. We are working with colleagues from INRIA and Institute Fourier to reference the overlaid journals in these different databases. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have some questions, please feel free to ask us. Yeah, thank you very much. So this is the time for you to ask questions. Uh, so we can uh, do the chat. Um, uh, also, uh, our colleague Andrea Vieira also already shared uh, some useful links um, about the service uh, during the presentation, so you can check it. So feel free to, um, to um, put your questions here in the chat or um, so really using your microphone, uh, webcam, so feel free. Yadranka have already made a question here. Thank you, Yadranka. What happens if the author has meanwhile submitted a preprint as a manuscript to another journal? Uh, 
Yeah, feel free to, to repeat. <clears throat> okay, so um, this is unusual because <laughs> this is not great. Uh, this is not great for anyone actually. So it could happen, of course, but uh, this is not the thing to do anyway. <laughs> Even for traditional journals, you don't have to do that. Of course. We, we do not prevent that, and we could not really do that. I think it's too difficult. Okay. Um, our colleague Eli from um, Eli Jith from uh, Dance, do you also advise on archiving uh, of research data underlying the articles? Yes, this is great, of course. Um, actually, what is interesting is that we can. Um, we can find the links between, uh, for instance, the published article or the preprint and the uh, data set that are linked link to that. For instance, in uh, Zenodo on, on AL, we can do that. And um, this is most of the time that's something that the journals are responsible for. Uh, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. I think Matthias could speak a bit about that for JTCAM because this is something great that they do. They do. Um, they do propose to authors to to post also their, da their data sets and the softwares. This is great, yes. Thank you very much. So of course, you can, we can also put questions to, to Celine and Raphael after Matthias' presentation, so but feel free if you... I also saw, I'm not sure, Raphael, because you also put your microphone uh, on. I'm not sure if you wanted to make a question, so I'm talking to Raphael. Heredero, I'm not sure, Ravel, if you wanted to speak, but I saw your microphone on. Um, so if you don't have any other question right now, I love I love the way that you manage that, Celine and Raphael, in the same room, manage your presentation, <laughs> sharing the technology, the, the technological environment you managed was great. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I saw your a change uh, ice, 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 ice connection to, to, to change the slide, which was great. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe we can move to Matthias' presentation and then if people please put your questions in the chat and then Celine and Raphael can also address them after after Matthias' presentation. Okay, thank you, Raphael and Celine. Let's 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 hear Matthias. Um, so this is, which is a specific use case that Raphael already mentioned, and then we can you can put questions to Matthias and also Raphael and Celine. So, Matthias, the floor is yours. You can present yourself and uh, and do the presentation. Thank you for for being available. Sure. Uh, so yes, uh, good uh, good afternoon and good morning. Um, so I'm uh, Matthias Rogan. I'm an associate. A professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at McGill. And I'm a big fan of uh, open science. So I will try to briefly describe what we've done for JTCAM. Uh, first, I wanted to share a few links so that maybe you want to have a look at the website uh, before we start or during the presentation. So this is the website of the, of the journal. As mentioned earlier, it's uh, the name of the journal episcience.org and we also uh, recently opened uh, a twitter account so uh, if you want to follow us on good practices you can okay so let me share my screen uh well i have a few slides about five slides and then maybe i'm gonna try to uh describe uh two 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 journal papers that are of uh, interest to us for good practices i think uh, so this is the presentation. So maybe I should reduce this. Oops. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. So uh, JTCAM is the Journal of Theoretical, Computational, and Applied uh, Mechanics. So uh, quickly, we first started to think about this idea of uh, creating an, an overall journal. In uh, yeah, I'm saying September 2015. It's probably September 2016, but it does not make a big difference. So um, we started to chat with colleagues and say, we have to create an overall journal in mechanics. It's very important. There's nothing like this in, in mechanics for now. And then we started to have a long, long, long discussion with the community. We tried to attract the uh, support of uh, 
learned uh, societies and we got it from Mechamat only from, from France. So Mechamat for uh, mechanical and materials. Um, and so we wanted to have support to make sure that uh, it would be a viable journal. And then I think it was uh, officially launched in uh, April, 2020. And uh, the first submission right after this date. So today we have 12 papers published. So you can, you can go on the website and have a look at on the uh, uh, article tab. Uh, and we have 16 in review. Uh, and yes, this is the first overlay, overlay journal. So overlay comes with diamond open access, I, I believe. Uh, it's not identical, but uh, this is the first overlay journal in mechanics. And we decided to opt for a very broad scope. So as opposed to a very, very limited uh, uh, expertise, we decided to go to open it to anyone interesting, interested in uh, uh, mechanical engineering. Um, so yeah, the question was, why did we decide to use the AP Sciences platform? Well, essentially it's uh, an historical uh, uh, answer to this reason to this. It's uh, the fact that uh, the four or the five co-founders of, of the journal uh, were already users of the of the HAL platform as uh, mentioned by uh, Raphael. And so AP Sciences was uh, a natural choice for us. We didn't really spend time on this. We just went for AP Science and we're very happy with this choice. Um, and so for the overall journal, so it was already explained by, by Rafael, so I'm, I'm just saying a few words. Uh, it's already in place in mathematics. We've got plenty of overall journals in mathematics, very few in engineering, uh, and if not any in mechanical engineering. So I think it adds uh, value compared to existing uh, traditional journals. And we have very good and quick technical support by, by Rafael mainly. Uh, so we can have a request and have an answer the day after. So all this is very nice. Um, we are very happy with all these uh, technical aspects of the of the platform. Uh, coming back to the JT Cam Journal, so we have a, a, a fairly strict uh, format, uh, which is based on LaTeX. So LaTeX is used for by by uh, by mathematicians mainly. Uh, if you're not aware of what it is, it's a competitor to world like or open office like uh, solutions and we have also a pretty strict uh, graphical charter so we're trying to to make sure that uh, others create nice figures readable figures uh, vector graphics uh, and so on uh, we also try to comply with fair um, uh, guidelines and we we try to also comply with reproducibility policies so I'm going to come back to this later with a, a few examples, but, uh, but essentially we, we try to, to, um, to make open data sets and open software solutions. So we use Zenodo for this or uh, Software Heritage, which is for, uh, for software solutions. I will come back to this later. And we also have an open peer review policy. Uh, this is not a common practice in, in my community, but it was a common practice in geomechanics, which is all, also open to, to uh, we open um, this this type of topics to 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 the uh, to the JT Cam uh, Journal, and so reviews are available on uh, HAL, and uh, reviewers can remain uh, anonymous. Uh, so the technical board, yeah, I'm spending a bit of time on this. So the technical board is essentially the the, the colleagues who are the co-founders of of the journal. So this is Vincent Acari from uh, Inria, uh, Francois Gibier from University of Montpellier myself from McGill University. I'm going uh, in the alpha alphabetical order. Uh, Maureen Montagna from, uh, from France as well, researcher in, at CNR, CNRS. And Vladislav uh, Yastrebov from uh, Mean Paris Tech in Paris. And essentially we, we do all the underground type of work for, for managing the, the journal. Uh, we have monthly meeting to discuss ongoing matters. And we are in charge of the editing of the final versions of the of the of the papers. So this is what takes most of our time uh, to deal with uh, to deal with uh, the, the journal. Uh, for the editorial board, we have nine members with uh, uh, an attempt to 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 have some balance in terms of gender and uh, uh, research expertise. There's no chief editor, so 
it's supposed to be a collegial organization so uh, editors speak together and try to see if they can handle a, a paper or if they cannot they, they try to uh, to send it to someone else who would be more uh, uh, who have more more expertise in, in the field and uh, if someone resigns then uh, a new members will be nominated by the, the whole board and so the whole board is the technical board the editorial board and the scientific board which has about 20 20 members at the moment um uh difficulties yes yeah, so i have a slide on difficulties uh so to manage an open access a diamond open access uh, over a journal so i would say at the moment uh, there is a little awareness uh from from the research community uh so essentially there's very few people aware of diamond open access so people know gold access they know green access but they don't really know diamond open access uh they don't really know overly journals either um so that's uh yeah that's a weakness for now uh, we we had fairly weak support from uh, learn society so they're already tied to existing publishers they don't really they don't really want to change their uh their practices and uh so that's the way it is and it's a bit sad but uh, uh it's not easy to to change uh also the journal indexing and recognition so it's a new journal um most young researchers will 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 won't want to to publish in a journal of this type because it's not yet recognized by 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 the system if i can can uh, call it this way and also i have this last bullet which i call competitors it's not a it's not competitors but it's a uh, same type of approach so we have side posts in the uh, netherlands and uh, peer community in which is also called pci in france and um, these two these two approaches to to go with diamond open access um, seems to be more uh, more more um, more um, at their ease to 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 raise funds to 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 make their uh, journal work uh, and this is an issue we have at uh, JTK is that uh, we don't have money at the moment so it's all done by the technical board on our free time so to speak and uh, we would like to be able to attract money but there's no uh, infrastructure at the moment to to do so and also uh, we don't have an, a clear publisher so at the moment it's in ria i will i will uh, try to clarify this aspect right after this uh, but it's not a publisher and we try to change it so we we would like epi science to to become a publisher and maybe also uh, 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 an infrastructure able to to deal with money but uh, it's an open question at the moment um and for future avenues well of course we would like to grow so at the moment we have about uh, 30 articles uh in the pipeline uh it's probably something like one per month you know it's not not so many uh and also um we have this issue of what, what i call the long-term management of the of the journal uh it's not clear what would happen if the current technical board resigns okay so if no one wants to take care of the journal then it dies probably and at the end of the experience um also we would like to better manage the open science guidelines so all these fair guidelines it's pretty it's pretty hard for us to follow all the uh, novelties and uh and it's even more problematic for others um and this is not a, this is not easy to implement and for like uh uh long-term avenues uh we would like to maybe implement automatic translation to comply with citizen science so you know like uh science not published in english only but maybe in spanish in uh, all all languages worldwide and maybe move to other publishing formats you know than pdf uh, PDF is a preferred format for now, but uh, uh, it has it has limitations and um, and maybe opening uh, like to EPUB or to HTML would be would be a good uh, good strategy. So if I have time, I would like to uh, have a look at two papers published in the in at, at JT Cam. So where am I now? Here, yes, probably. So I'm uh, I'm sharing my. Uh, uh, yes, the yes. web page of the journal. 
So this is uh, the webpage of, of, of the journal. So again, hosted by Episcience that you see on the left. And if you go to the article tab here, you, you have a look at the published papers. So I just want to spend a bit of time on two of them. So the first one is uh, this one here, an F FFT solver used for virtual DMA, whatever. It's not uh, This is not the goal here to spend time on the paper, but to spend time on the linked data here. So here we have two, two links. Uh, the first one goes to an open review. So if I if I go to uh, to this Zenodo webpage, I will go to uh, the review. So the open review of of the of the of the of the article. Sorry. So if you click on on the link, you get you get access to the open review. And the second link is related to um, open science. So here we go to a software heritage that was mentioned before in my presentation. Um, so essentially software heritage is an archive for software solutions. Um, so here, um, this is one, one uh, software solution that was used in a paper and it's all nicely archived and uh, it's supposed to comply with uh, reproducibility uh, guidelines. So uh, readers that are interested in this paper could um, pull or like yeah, download the files that were used to, to, to produce the results of the paper. And this is forever, okay? This will never uh, uh, vanish in, in nowhere. And uh, so this should, should comply uh, with uh, uh, open science on, uh, in the long term. The second one, that I wanted to have a look at is this one, sorry. Uh, yeah, so this is a, another paper. This one was hosted by Archive, okay? So the, the first one was on HL, this one is on Archive. So if you click on this link, you go to the Archive website. And uh, if I click on the PDF here, download the, this file, uh, you won't see my PDF here. I will have to switch again. Okay, sorry, I will switch again to the PDF uh, here. Yes, so you should see, do you see the, the paper now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so uh, yeah, so you see the PDF and you see here on the left column, you see the identifiers, DOI of the, PDF, of the, of the paper, archive link, version six of the paper. And here you see the associate editor, the reviewers. So some are anonymous, some are not. And you see the open review here, which is hosted by HL. And you see here supplementary material data here, uh, which is on Zenodo. And here the Zenodo website is uh, on the uh, figures of the paper. So the figures of the paper here, most of them can be reproduced. So all these figures here, the data sets, the raw data sets, so text format essentially, is shared on Zenodo so that um, interested review uh, readers can re uh, recreate these figures. So it's also some sort of open uh, data and open science uh, guidelines here, uh, but we don't share here the uh, software, the whole software solution uh, which generated the, the, the figures. So it depends on the authors um, on uh, if they want to share, what they want to share, uh, is they uh, open to share the whole the whole uh, framework of their paper or not. Um, and that's uh, what closes my uh, presentation, I think. Oh yeah, last last uh, topic that I wanted to, to mention is that uh, in, the, in the bibliography here, so the, the reference list, we also try to identify all the open access links. So we, we identify the DOIs, but also open access. So sometimes it goes to the journal webpage if this is, for instance, gold access or it goes to uh, HAL here. So if there is an HAL version, we try to, to link to the HAL version here. And also to archived, uh, might have an example somewhere here. Uh, well, anyway, no, I don't have one here. Uh, but we, we try, yeah, here, I have one here, so archive. We try to, uh, to link to all the open access uh, versions of the cited papers. Um, I think that's what closes my uh, my Great. presentation. Um, Great examples, Matthias. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so uh, yeah, so we are very happy with the science uh, as as a technical platform. Very easy to 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 work with. The only 
two limitations that we were facing now with the uh, fundraising issue and uh, the, um, the publisher side of, of, of the journal, which is for now in RIA, and it's not really uh, satisfactory. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matthias, and um, congratulations, because it's really very good stuff that you are doing. Congratulations. So it's a very good steps towards reproducibility and uh, open science, for sure, open science, good practice, reproducibility. It's always difficult to achieve, but it's a very good contribution for your field. So thank you. And it's a great use case from EpiScience. So thank you also, Rafael and Celine, to invite Matthias. So feel free. So we have some minutes before we move to the next uh, part of the of 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 the um, of this this session so please um, ask questions to matthias so i think the examples were great also please check the um, links that matthias shared in the beginning also andre also put here the example that uh, matthias was was presenting uh, Kathleen already shared, uh, it's not a, a, a question, it's more a comment that the, the COAR, the Confederation of Open Access Repositories Notify project is developing an interoperable approach to enable overlay journals and open peer review scale and talk to connect with any compatible service or repository. So you can check information about this project get that Kathleen is mentioning here in this site. Thank you, uh, Kathleen, for sharing this uh, important initiative and related initiative. Maybe uh, later, be for sure, uh, this will be part of uh, also a, an open air webinar. <laughs> Um, any question, any comment, feel free to, so if you don't want to write in the chat, just, just ask. Um, I think it was also a very comprehensive presentation and clear presentation. When you said, when you said the fundraising, so the, this in the, in the last uh, sentence, you, 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 um, you share, Matthias, uh, about the two main uh, issues. You said fundraising, so it's uh, what is the the main. Uh, well, the idea is, uh, yeah, that was uh, mentioned by uh, Raphael or maybe Celine. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that we're uh, working with latex based documents, and so uh, other than us, uh, their uh, their uh, files, so that we can compile on our side, and that's what take times. Um, and so we would like to maybe um, send this to contractors and mm -hmm. uh, and pay them. So of course we're still a very very limited cost. Um, I think we can maybe think about a uh, 100 euros per paper or something of this type. Uh, so this is a type of money we would uh, like to to raise to 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 essentially uh, uh, function the the journal. Uh, so this is the idea for now. Uh, so it's little money, but uh, yeah. uh, you know, SciPost and uh, PCI. If you go to their website, they announce every almost every day that uh, they they could uh, they could uh, raise money with pretty big amounts, and uh, we're not able to do this at the moment. Great, many thanks. Okay, um, if you don't have any comment. Uh... So Colin Chrisman also said, thinking about long-term management, as you said, Matthias, is your journal working on a succession plan or is the difficult not so much what the policy will be, but recruiting individuals to continue with the journal? Is your journal uh, working on a succession plan? Yeah, well, uh, I would not say that we're working on a succession plan explicitly. We have this question in mind, of course, um, but uh, we don't have any solution at the moment. And uh, for, for, for the five co-founders of the journal, that was just like, uh, because we were very convinced that we had to do something of this type. Um, if we have to resign, we have to convince someone else that it's a, a, a nice, um, a nice uh, journal. Uh, but uh, if no one wants to take over, then that's the way it is. Uh, um, so yeah, that's uh, yeah. again. I think that's uh, probably a weakness at the moment. Um, so I think that the whole system has to change. You know, if we can say in our uh, yearly uh, annual activity report that we are in charge of a of a diamond open access journal and and the system is happy with this, 
then we will have many many colleagues yes. uh, wanting to be involved in this but at the moment that's not the case yes and thank you for this uh, this last um, uh, answer because this is really uh, good to move to the next presentation feel free to also then at the end say something also matthias Celine, and and, and uh, rafael bergt um I'm thank you for for joining i think this is the what matthias said now it's really the right moment to to move to the action plan uh, Berg, uh please present yourself um, uh, from science europe and um, and proceed with your your presentation and thank you very much it's a pleasure to welcome you in this um, open air webinar and uh, really thank you for your support and uh, so let's 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 hear from you and maybe we will this action plan we have uh, some kind of strategic approach to reply to some of the the issues that uh, matthias also highlighted so let's see let's move from a practical solution to the to the roadmap <laughs> to the Indeed. strategy thank you pedro for that introduction uh, so my name is brecht sanen i am with science europe science europe is an association uh, representing uh, the main public research funding and performing organizations across Europe. And, and I am here today, I'm very happy to be here today after these presentations by my fellow uh, speakers to present the Diamond Open Access uh, Action Plan and essentially our work together with our partners on uh, strengthening this ecosystem and i think it's it's as pedro mentioned it's very good to now get to this action plan because um what i think you see in the presentations that came before is that this is an ecosystem that not only exists it thrives this is uh, very innovative there's very good work being done uh, not just in these examples that we've seen but just across the board this is a vast big ecosystem as we will see um, and, and now is a very good moment to, to take stock of, of that ecosystem and also how can we strengthen it further? Because that was another thing that I picked up on throughout the presentations was that even though there's very good work being done, uh, there are real challenges. There's real challenges that uh, go uh, into the systemic level, essentially, and, and go above any individual or any sort of journal or even platform to deal with this ease. This is something that we'll have to deal with together. And, and that brings me to my presentation, Diamond Open Access uh, and the Action Plan. Um, and in my presentation, I'd want to give uh, some attention to the Action Plan, of course, I'll get to that. But I want to start where we started uh, about two years ago and talk you through the process of how we uh, at Science Europe and our partner organizations uh, started to get involved and, and what was sort of the inspiration behind that. So I'm, I'm very briefly going to go through this, uh, the defining diamond open access. Oh, sorry. That was the wrong button, clearly. Uh, defining diamond open access, this does not need to happen anymore, but uh, the definition that we arrived at is ultimately is these are journals and platforms that do not charge fees to either the authors or the readers. Uh, we are looking at a very, very different model as APC open access publishing, obviously. Uh, but beyond that, we also feel that uh, by and large diamond open access, what you see very often, you've seen that in the examples, is this is uh, typically community driven, academic led and owned, very important. That's the type of publishing initiatives we we're talking about. Uh, and they also tend to serve a, a fine grained variety of generally, generally small scale, multilingual and multicultural uh, scholarly communities. They are essentially equitable by nature and by design. Uh, so that is our definition of diamond open access that we're starting from. And I told you I was going to take you through the process, how we arrived at the action plan, because it's very important to realize how we got there. And essentially, the way we arrived there was we uh, had a journal study published uh, in uh, last year in 2021. Uh, this was uh, together with, uh, you know, Science Europe, together with Coalition S, OPERAS, and the French National Research Agency, ANR. Um, we, um, brought together a, for the first time, I think I can really call this a landmark study 
on the diamond open access ecosystem because even though we realized that there was quite a lot going on we didn't quite have the full picture that was the reason this study started is that we felt this is an ecosystem we don't quite have a full grasp of like how big is this how much is going on here that is what this study was intended to do to get a full grasp as much as we could of this ecosystem and you see in the findings uh, this was a very extensive study. It's not exhaustive, but it was a very extensive study, a survey of 1,619 journals together with focus group interviews. And, and why do I call this a landmark study? It's, I think, the first study to really establish the archipelago, archipelago of 17,000 to 29,000 uh, journals that that we found that that would fit the bill that are part of this ecosystem this is a vast vast ecosystem uh, that goes across different disciplines uh, obviously you see there's 60.6 percent in ssh uh, but also 17.1 in medicine and 22.2 in other sciences so it's across different disciplines um, and also very important to note 44 percent uh, of open access journal publishing is diamond open access which comes it's about eight or nine percent of the total publishing volume which can keep, be compared to 10 to 11 percent for apc gold um, so it's it's an enormous ecosystem that is incredibly important already today for scholarly publishing and it's just generally not quite visible is the issue quite frankly it's because we for example uh, only yesterday i was talking to somebody who is more uh familiar with sort of the medicine uh the discipline of the medicine and he said well i haven't quite heard a lot about diamond open access and then we could tell him based on the study well actually 17.1 percent of publishing is diamond open access in your discipline so again it's sort of it's there it's just not as visible and that is why this study has been so consequential, is to bring that up uh, into the light and show this is a real vast and, and, and very performative uh, ecosystem. At the same time, and, and this is what I said that came before in the presentations before, uh, this study did also identify a couple of main challenges, really at the systemic level. Uh, or at the journal level, uh, quite a few challenges uh, in terms of technical capacity, the management visibility, as I mentioned, and also just the sustainability. Um, none of these things are necessarily unique to Diamond Open Access. I don't want to say that this is only a challenge for Diamond Open Access uh, publishing, but if we're looking at just Diamond Open Access, then yes, these are some of the main challenges the study uh, brought to light. And we also have one clear uh, main recommendations, which is more dialogue and commitment between the different stakeholders. Uh, this is uh, an ecosystem. If you want to strengthen it, then we're going to have to look at a systemic level to strengthen it. And we're going to need all the stakeholders uh, to be involved in that dialogue and to be committed uh, to that dialogue. So that is the main recommendation that came out of the study. This is a study that was published uh, sometime last year, 2021, in March. And then what? We, we had, I believe, as I've said a couple of times now, a hugely consequential study in our hands with amazing findings about diamond open access. Uh, and then it was up to us, the partners behind this study, to think, well, what next? How do we take this forward? How do we make sure that this study is not the end point, but it is the start of something to actually do something about strengthening this ecosystem further and, and help all the journals and platforms working in this ecosystem to do what they do uh, on, on a more sustainable basis to help them do even better work uh, by removing some of these challenges. And what we arrived at and what we launched earlier this month in March, it's very new, is the action plan for Diamond open access the action plan essentially uh there is a link in the chat there's also a link in these slides that will be disseminated after the presentations it aims to substantially increase the capacity of diamond journals and platforms to provide innovative valid valid reliable and accessible 
publishing services. It's, it is the next step after the study. And the action plan, and I'll get to it in just a minute, what is in that action plan, but it was prepared again by Science Europe, Coalition S, OPRAS, and the French National Research Agency, ANR. But it wasn't just us. We had the study to build on and to start drafting this action plan. But we also, from the very beginning, wanted to involve uh, the stakeholders, wanted to involve the ecosystem and make sure we got it right that we were identifying the right way forward and the right vision for this ecosystem. So that is why a workshop, a workshop was held on the 2nd of February where a draft was presented and discussed with um, many people from the ecosystem, experts, international experts, also our own members. And, and a couple of smaller events were also held uh, to really finalize the action plan. And then uh, that last point, I'm going to get back to that. Interested organizations and individuals are welcome to join this community by endorsing the action plan. You have the link there. I will get back to this. Uh, the link will also be later on in the slides. So what is in the action plan? What did we ultimately uh, put in there? Uh, we have uh, four central elements. Um, we said the priority objectives for the ecosystem is to improve the efficiency, quality standards, uh, capacity building, and sustainability of diamond open access. That is taking a look at the entire ecosystem. We felt that there are the four priorities for us to work on and, and really establish if we, if we want to strengthen this ecosystem uh, in the long run. Um, Two things I want to make very clear about this action plan, if these are the four central elements, is that yes, there is a focus on alignment and building common resources for diamond open access journals, platforms, and the whole ecosystem. That is a big part of this action plan, alignment, building common resources. Uh, but at the very same time, uh, that third point I think is very important on this slide. We do respect the cultural, multilingual, and disciplinary diversity that we believe constitutes a strength of diamond open access. The, the decentralized nature uh, and the diversity of this ecosystem that we found with the study is absolutely a strength. And if we talk in the action plan about alignment and building common resources, that should be very clearly be understood as helping to uh, maintain a very diverse set of journal and platforms that can uh, do their own thing and only uh, talk about alignment and common resources when it helps them to do that. This is not something about coordination and then creating a single mold for the entire ecosystem. That is not the intention here. I wanna be very clear uh, that that is not in this action plan. So those are the central elements. Um, I have the central elements here on the slides. Um, it's efficiency. As you can see, it's quality standards, and I'm just skipping through them. It is capacity building and it is sustainability. Sustainability, maybe I will mention that that is not just financial sustainability. We are also looking at the legal status and governance of uh, Diamond Open Access. Uh, so it's broader than financial. But the reason I'm skipping through that is because while all of this is uh, included in much more detail in the action plan, you can read that uh, for yourself. I'm happy to provide more details, of course. But uh, the main thing here is that these are the four central elements and you can walk through them, keeping in mind that yes, alignment and common resources, but also in function of maintaining and strengthening the existing diversity, that is what the action plan is after. Uh, the reason I'm skipping them is that I can then go to, I think is already my last slide, and maybe we have more time for uh, questions and feedback. And that is that this process now obviously uh, continues. The action plan exists. It was launched uh, earlier this month, as I said, in early March. Uh, the initial success has been astounding. We have had uh, a great success. You can see that on the website, it's publicly listed everyone who has endorsed it, both at an organizational and an individual level. Uh, for example, CNRS, I'm very happy that they were here to present because they've also endorsed the action plan. Um, and the action plan now will be taken forward under the umbrella initially of a Horizon Europe project that I'm happy to announce has been awarded. 
There is a Diamas project that will start in September of this year. And uh, that project will give that consortium that's behind that project uh, the tools to build and, and strengthen and move forward from the action plan through events and activities. That is something that is starting in September. And at the same time, it's, it's very good to, to know that uh, all of the endorsers of the action plan are already now being uh, involved and will soon be invited uh, to provide their own feedback on how do you want to shape this process in the coming months and years. Uh, and that brings me finally to, uh, again, the point I made in the beginning is that uh, interested organizations and individuals are welcome to join this community by endorsing the action plan. Uh, Preempting a couple of questions I expect in the chat. I can't see the chat, but I'm assuming maybe somebody is asking, well, is there any financial commitment uh, to this? Like if we endorse it, uh, is there any financial commitment asked of us? Uh, no, endorsement does not entail any financial commitment. Uh, I very briefly talked about that the sustainability element of the action plan that is going into uh, the finances, the long-term finances, the investments, uh, that may be needed to, to strengthen the ecosystem. But endorsing this action plan does not mean that you are committed uh, in any financial sense. What you are uh, committing to with the action plan instead is you're joining a community that wants to strengthen this ecosystem and believes that the action plan and its central elements are the way forward, that you subscribe to the vision that speaks out of the action plan and that you are okay with those central elements being the priority objectives for strengthening the ecosystem. That is what endorsement means. And then uh, finally, uh, on the, the link you can see there at the end, an overview of people and organizations uh, having endorsed it is publicly available. We're also very happy that many of them are also launching their own press releases, being very vocal and, and very visible in saying we have signed this because we believe in this action plan. That is it for me. Uh, if there's any questions, uh, I think Pedro will, will manage that. Uh, but again, I'm also for just a moment keeping uh, the link online here, uh, oh, well, online on, on the screen for people who are interested. But I think also in the chat, you can find the link directly to the action plan. So with that being said, uh, thank you. And I look forward to your questions. Yes, please feel free to ask your questions, put in the chat or just um, put your microphone on as Daniela is already doing. Yes, thank you, Daniela. Hello, thank you so much, Brecht, for this incredibly important work that you're doing at Science Europe. And I've already endorsed uh, the action plan, so I'm quite happy uh, to see you moving forward um, also with the DMAS, um project. Um, I'm at the University of Zurich and we're kind of planning a study that is very similar to what you did in the diamond open access study for the Swiss platinum or diamond landscape. Um, what I'm interested in um, uh, concerning your presentation is what you call a capacity center. Um, can you can you maybe elaborate what, what is meant by that? What kind of capacities uh, uh, will, will be kind of under the umbrella of that kind of center. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank you for endorsing and thank you for the question. I will be very vague. I'm sorry. Um, it's, it, it is indeed uh, within the action plan a capacity center, uh, which is in, in several different elements, but also, for example, in the sustainability part of it, there is that capacity center announced. We will explore if, if that makes sense and if that is a good thing for the ecosystem to have a capacity center like that where um, uh, journals and platforms can go to, uh, to find know-how, find a lot of the tools that they need, uh, but also maybe in the future uh, in terms of sort of the, the financial management of quite a few things, um, if that is sort of a one-stop shop perhaps uh, for, for the ecosystem to go to that they know that that exists. Um, you immediately notice I'm relatively vague then in my answer. It's not much more than is in the action plan. The reason for that is that we have this as, as one of the potential ways forward in the action plan. 
But this is not something, and I keep repeating this, this is not for us now to say this absolutely has to happen or it has to happen in a certain way. It has to do certain things. Uh, I think we have our own ideas, the partners behind the action plan. Uh, but this is where we need a discussion with the community because, for example, for this capacity center to really be um, self-sustaining and really be a part of the community, I think you also need to start looking at the governance of the center itself, who is a decision maker if that center is founded, uh, and, and they will then, to a large extent, uh, decide what the capacity center becomes. Uh, so that is why I'm staying relatively uh, vague about this. But this is uh, one of the things that we are hoping to discuss with the community, with the endorsing uh, organizations and individuals uh, pretty soon. Um, it hasn't gone out quite yet, I think, but if you've endorsed uh, the action plan quite soon from us, you can uh, expect uh, an invitation to uh, an online event where we are going to be asking these types of questions uh, as we prepare for uh, the Diamas project to start in September to take the action plan uh, forward. Thank you. By the uh, way, uh, Pedro... Rema Melero is asking about um, who are uh, Diamas partners and where can we find more information about the, the project? Yes, so you just uh, open the window I, now. <laughs> I was just going to pick up on that. Um, it is an enormous consortium, so uh, it's 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 clearly sort of the the partners that were on the slides that are behind the action plan, but the consortium is much much bigger. Um, I, I don't immediately have the full list here on my laptop to project it, um, but if Reme is interested, then he can get in touch with me uh, via email. I can I can definitely send you the list. Uh, nothing is online yet. There's also no easy link that I can send to uh, because this is really in preparation now for September. Uh, but the partners that you saw on the slides, we are in it. Uh, the European University Association, for example, uh, I'm going to be forgetting a lot of partners, uh, but EUA is in it. And that's, for example, something to, to highlight is that as Science Europe is representing uh, research funding and performing organizations, we're also very happy in this project to have uh, the universities uh, represented, which brings us back to the main recommendation of the study, which is if we're going to be strengthening the ecosystem, then we are going to have to have all the stakeholders around the table in that dialogue and to be committed to that, to that dialogue. So uh, Remy, please uh, get in touch with me. I'll, I'll be happy to send you the list now that it's still not online. Um, but what you will see is that uh, we've hopefully done a very good job and getting all the different stakeholders represented within the project. Great, many thanks. Uh, so I already shared also the um, uh, your slides that you have mentioned several times. So they are already here in the chat also. Please feel free to add, uh, to add questions. So we have uh, seven, eight minutes more, but of course we can finish before the time. Um, also, Rafael, Celine, and Matias, if you want to add something, please feel free. But um, um, as Daniela did, if you want to ask question, feel feel free. So, uh, so Rodiel, uh, replying to you, yes. So we are recordings, and uh, we are recording, and we will be made this available via the the open air channels. And uh, so we are going to send uh, to all registered um, participants also an highlight. So. Later today or tomorrow morning, this will be available as we usually do. Um, any other comment, question? So I now invite all the speakers if you want to add something, uh, uh, add something to ask something, or just to, to that you uh, want to remind something about your presentation. So feel free. So, Rafael, feel. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to to come back to something that uh, Catherine shared outside in the chat. So, this is really interesting. It is not in production for for our platform right now, but it is under development. It means that soon uh, 
the uh, repository and the episciences platform will uh, leverage the core notify protocol or can call that a protocol i guess maybe so this would be really interesting for us we could be interconnected to other to other services like pci for instance or episciences of course and any other compliant um, platform that is compliant with core notify also, we'll be able to submit uh, preprints from HAL to, to AP Sciences um, within the HAL environment. It means that you don't have, you don't have to switch uh, from the preprint server to the journal website. This will be easier for researchers to submit preprints with this, uh, with this solution. So this is really a great solution, but it is not right now in production, but hopefully it will soon be available on HAL and AP Sciences. Yeah. and um, also on PCI. Thank you. Thank you, Raphael. Matthias, Celine, if you want to add some final comment, feel free, if not. Yes, thank you very much for inviting us to present our uh, work today. It was a pleasure to, to be here with you. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Matthias. And thank you, Brett and Pedro and, um, and uh, André. Uh, for organizing uh, okay. this meeting. Thank you very much. OK, so thank you, Matthias. Back to, I'm not sure. Let me check the final the, do a final check to the chat. No, no more comments. So I'm, I, I wanted to, if yes, we have a, like a of minute course, of more, course, of course, we have, yes, please. Uh, just one thing. So in my presentation, uh, I, I focused on, on the action plan and the process behind it, uh, past, present, and future. Um, since we have a couple of minutes and since I, I'm seeing so many people um, that, that uh, I recognize the names of like in the open science community and, and the broader transition to open science, I just wanted to highlight for a very quick minute um, the, the, the connections to the broader connections to the transition to open science uh, that we are seeing right now. We're seeing quite a lot of debate in, in the transition to open science about the equitability of that transition, how equitable is that transition? And I think that is like a very obvious link to our work on diamond open access, which is a, a very different model from APCs where uh, we want to be very clear that in our minds, uh, open access publishing uh, is not something that is only for those who can pay it. You know, that is obviously sort of the big discussion with APCs that are quite excessive at times. And then there is, is starting to become this idea that if you want to do open access, there's uh, quite a few people now starting slowly starting to assume, oh, well, that's APCs that is costly. If you have an institution uh, or a grant that you can pay that, that then you can do open access. Diamond open access, uh, the big strength there is it shows quite clearly that that is not true, that this is not something that is only available. Open access publishing is not only available if you have the funding. That is not necessarily true. That is not how it should be, uh, in our opinion. So that is uh, a big link there. In that discussion on open science in general, the, the discussion about equity that I think now really is coming to the foreground with the publication of the UNESCO recommendation on open science, I think diamond open access is a part of that discussion. Uh, and then obviously there are quite a few more uh, related discussions, but I just wanted to point that out at the end uh, because I don't think that this can be uh, repeated enough. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Good point, uh, Bert, thank you. And with this, we are coming to an end. So we are going to send the presentations and the recordings. Uh, they will be made available also online in the common, in the normal open air uh, website. Thank you very much for all the speakers, Celine, uh, Matthias, Raphael, and, and Berg. Thank you very much for joining. So open air is, is committed. we committed to the shift scholarly communications towards openness and, uh, and transparency. So the services that we have um, in Open Air Nexus and the, we are working to on, on the onboarding process for EOSC and to enrich and improve these services are also addressing this, this challenge. So count with us. We will have um, 
we will organize for sure more webinars in the coming months in April and in May also about other services about also uh, Horizon Europe uh, open, uh, open science requirements but please wait um, be expect more information from, from our side about coming webinars so thank you all uh, see you so I will just leave the, the the session open for you to copy paste some links from the chat and then we close the session Bert, many thanks for your presentation, okay, for your availability. Bye-bye all.